Rules are rolling. Lovely. So you tell me when you think it sounds like it wants a gear no. change. Yes, I would agree. Oh. Okay. So just to point what out. What happened there? When when you change that, absolutely fine. When yeah. you're changing gear, okay, you want momentarily no more power going through to the wheels so you get Did a nice smooth gear the so you left your foot down on the gas pedal as yeah. you're changing gear so you just need to do that with your feet when you're changing gear okay okay i could kind of tell it felt like i was a bit but that just <laughs> don't worry proved it it's absolutely fine um we're not afraid of making mistakes when we're learning to drive okay because that's how we learn yeah I haven't gone into third. Nope, that's fine. We'll leave it in second for now. Yeah. And you want to get slightly slower when you're going round and round about. But we don't need any brake for that. If you just come off the gas pedal now, the yeah. car will start to just slow down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I'll have a look, make sure it's safe for us to drive on to the roundabout. Yeah. Put a right signal on to let people know that you're going round to the right. It's safe for us to drive on. And now you use your head to help you with your steering. Look at where you want the car to go to next. Lovely. Brilliant. Very nice. Nice natural steering. You've got to feed it through, haven't you? You don't, no, no, you don't. You don't, don't. have to? No. Nope. Oh, okay. You can let the wheel spin back through your hands if you want. Okay. And you can cross your hands as well. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, lots of people are uh, under the impression that you have to use what's called the push-pull or feeding yeah. technique. Um, it's a myth. Okay. Okay. Okay, so it's a third. Lovely, very nice smooth gear change, like that. Okay, now we're going to use the post box to help us with the timing of things. So start braking when we get there. Just you? very, very gently. Yeah. And that's it. Now you can start to slide into second gear. That's fourth. Yeah. And now you've got plenty of time to bring the clutch pedal back up again. So now your speed is under control. Yeah. So put a left indicator on. Now start to look at where you want the car to go to next. And keep looking at where you want it to go. And then as your eyes straighten up, let the wheel straighten up with you. That is so helpful, looking at where I want to go. <laughs> it just felt like so easy. <laughs> and it is, isn't it? Um, and again, same thing here start to look now and just let your hands naturally follow your eyes and as your eyes straighten back up let the wheel straighten back up with you okay mm -hmm. so come off the gas pedal okay yep. into first gear oh that was straight up okay it? now look over your shoulder at where you want the car to go to next and then as your eyes straighten up let your hands just point where your eyes are looking That's it, that, that's that's the secret yeah. to steering. Yeah, it's no yeah. more complicated than that. Yeah. Shall I keep going up? Yes, please. Now, at the end of this road, we're gonna use that feathering the clutch technique. Mm -hmm. okay. So we don't wanna wait until we get there and then start doing it. So clutch down now. Feel the car speed drop a little bit. Now we want to use that feathering clutch. We want it going no faster than this until we can see that it's safe. So look in all directions. Keeps creeping out, creeping out, creeping out, creeping out. So don't have your foot on the brake and the clutch at the same time won't be able to move forward if you've got your foot on the brake. So creep us out. Shall we go? Yeah, we're all good to go. There's nobody coming. Well, that's right, just, just bring it up again a fraction and that's all. Okay. Now aim us towards the kerb. I'll tell you when to steer away. Steer away now. Straighten up. Clutch all the way down. 
gently brake to a stop. And brake on into neutral. Oh, I went into neutral first. That's all right. <laughs> it's fine. Okay, as long as it, if you're gonna um, go into neutral and then hand brake, as long as you've got your foot still on the foot brake, for the same mm -hmm. reasons, is as soon yeah. as you're out of gear, the car sure. will roll yeah. if you're on a bit of a slope. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we just need to make sure we've got the car secure yeah. before we take our feet away from the pedals. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. My advice would be handbrake neutral, mm -hmm. but you know, we don't we don't need to be anal about it. We do sometimes mm -hmm. handbrake uh, neutral and handbrake as fine as long as we've got the car secured yeah. on the foot brake. Right, okay, so what are your thoughts? I just didn't go up into third. That's right. <laughs> I stayed in second. That's right, doesn't matter. Other than um, changing gear up there, that wasn't good. Yeah, so let's have a quick recap of that. And so why did that happen? Because I kept my foot on the accelerator. I should have taken it fully off and then put the foot all the way down and changed gear. Yeah, okay. So um, I'm not a mechanic or a technician, so I can't explain how a car works in any great sort of technical detail. Um, I'm guessing you're not a mechanic no. or a, a car <laughs> tech expert no. either, right, good. So I'm not gonna embarrass <laughs> myself then. Um, right, let me just give you a little bit of a heads up in terms of the way a clutch works. I, mm. In what I think is called layman's terms, you know, that it's quite easy for most people to visualize and it helps you to get a concept of how the, the clutch comes into play when you're changing gear and when you're using the clutch like a feathering point you know to move the car very 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 slowly okay and also why you need to take your feet away from the gas pedal when you're changing gear mm -hmm. so if we imagine that a car has got two sets of cogs effectively mm -hmm. one's connected to the wheels the other's connected to the engine okay um so you know we've got these two sets of cogs like that yeah when the clutch is all the way down, these two sets of cogs are completely disconnected. Okay, so we can practice that now. If you get, get the clutch down into first gear, but leave the clutch pedal all the way down to the floor. Right, so these two sets of cogs, even though you're in gear, are completely disconnected. Now with your clutch still all the way down to the floor, press that gas pedal as hard as you like. Press it even harder. <laughs> we're still completely disconnected. Yeah. So you can put as much power into the engine if you want, but none of that power is getting through to the wheels. Yeah. Okay, so just take it out of gear now and you can take your foot off the clutch pedal again. When the clutch pedal is all the way up, these two sets of cogs are completely interconnected. Mm -hmm. So the moment you do anything with the gas pedal, you get an immediate reaction from yeah. the wheels. So if you press, the gas pedal down we get more power going through to the wheels and if you lift the gas pedal up we get less power going through to the wheels mm -hmm. because these two sets are completely interlocked okay when the clutch is at biting point they're starting to come together but they're barely touching mm -hmm. so again we'll practice it now clutch down into the first gear it's a bit of a confidence thing, this, okay? So clutch up to biting point. There, okay? So we're just starting to connect. Clutch down a fraction. Release the handbrake. Right, now hold your left foot completely still. There is a van coming up from behind us, but we're not gonna be a problem because we're not really gonna move anywhere mm -hmm. at this moment. Now press that gas pedal firmly. Well, my foot's all the way down. Your left foot all the way down. Yeah. Oh, bring so it back up to biting point for me. There, hold it there. No more. Now press the gas pedal firmly, but don't move that left foot. See, so you can put as much power as you like, mm -hmm. but we're still not getting any transference of power through to the wheels. But if you bring that clutch pedal up a fraction more now, these start these cogs are coming together, mm -hmm. and you'll get that reaction from the car. Yeah. Okay, so just bring us to a stop again. So when we're feathering the clutch, just take it out of gear for a second, handbrake off, and then you can relax your feet. 
when we're feathering the clutch, basically what we're doing is this. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're mm-hmm. just bringing together for a second and then taking it away again and bring it back and bring it back and bring it back and bring it back. And that allows the car to move forward at a very, very, very low speed. Mm-hmm. So you use it when you're coming out from one road into another road at a T-junction. Yeah. You'd also use it if you were parking, reverse or in mm-hmm. first, it's the same technique. You'd use it if you were creeping forward in a traffic queue or creeping forward in any other situation where you want the car to keep rolling, but just at a very, very, very low speed. Mm-hmm. Okay, It's a technique that you're going to use a lot. Yeah. I promise you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, right. Okay. So when, if you don't take your foot off the gas pedal when you're changing gear, then what, what's happening is you're just putting too much power through the car and because when you start to bring your clutch pedal back up again these two sets of cogs are starting to engage then we get that a little kick yeah. into the car because we're putting a bit too much power through the wheels at that moment in time mm-hmm. okay that's all yeah. that happens yeah that it's not sense. like it's not like we're going to explode or suddenly <laughs> accelerate at, up to 100 miles an hour yeah. right it doesn't feel great it doesn't sound brilliant mm-hmm. but nothing horrible is going to happen yeah. okay anything else at all that you picked up on that either made sense or didn't make sense or i don't think so i should have steered more at the roundabout i should have kept bringing it down more i felt like i went really wide you're right you did and did, did you notice why no. I'll, I'll tell you, because I was, <laughs> I was watching again. When you, when you entered the roundabout, you looked to the left and then you looked back straight and then you kept looking straight for a while whilst you were steering and then you looked over your shoulder and then you realised you needed to steer more. Yeah. Okay. So had you have looked over your shoulder earlier, earlier mm-hmm. I think you would have found it easier to steer yeah. and you wouldn't have taken quite such a wide circle. But again, it's practice. You know, yeah. If it doesn't come totally naturally to begin with, don't worry about that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right, let's have another go then. Let's get us up to the roundabout, up into third this time, if you can. Mm-hmm. Around, around, about, and back down. Okay. So just think yourself through what you want to do and how you're going to do it. Lovely, lovely clutch control. Very Thank nice. You. Oh, I did it again. It's alright. It's because I don't want to s- completely stop moving. You won't. As we'll so demonstrate in a moment. Build up speed a little bit. Right, take your foot away from the gas pedal, get your clutch pedal down and see what happens. Yeah, nothing really. Nothing Just keep really. rolling. <laughs> yeah. So you've got all the time in the world to change gear. So bring yeah. your clutch pedal up. A bit more power. A bit more. Now up into third. Take as long as you like over it. I look down, which isn't good. Okay, again, okay. we're not looking necessarily for perfection at this stage. <laughs> so uh, bring that speed down a little bit more for the roundabout and then back into second gear. Okay, you've got time to bring your clutch pedal all the way up nice and smoothly. Don't need to rush anything. Okay, now steer with your eyes. not all going to happen exactly as it should happen in a flash. Mm -hmm. Like anything else, it takes practice. Yeah. Okay. But the more you practice, the better you're going to get. Okay. So we're going to turn left again, like you did before. And I'll leave it up to you to use those sort of markers at the side of the road that we were talking about. Yeah. So just to remind you, you're still in second gear, which is fine. So I don't need to change gear. Yeah, you don't need do to I change, no, you can just leave it in second. You just need to concentrate on your speed. So many potholes.
thinking this speed is a little bit too fast yeah. to get us turned around. So I'd get it back into first. And now to steer with your eyes again. And if you want, once you've completed your steering, let the wheel spin back on its own. Just let go. Yeah, just let go. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when we develop your steering technique a bit more, what mm -hmm. we want to do is get your skin still in contact with the wheel as it spins. Yeah. Okay, so if you did need to grab it, yeah, you've, you've got control over the car. So yeah, we don't want to take our hands completely off the wheel. Yeah. I ask you to do it just so that you can see what the steering yeah. wheel does. It will naturally correct itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's what it's meant to do. So we don't really need to do too much work to get it corrected. All we need to do is let it do its own thing, but we need to have skin in contact with the wheel at the same time. So we're turning right here. So using that feathering the clutch technique, think about those two sets of cogs and how they work together to keep a little trickle of power going through into the wheels. And then when you want a little bit more power going through, you bring your clutch pedal up a little bit more. And then when we're coming to a stop, we want to take the power away from the wheels again. So we aim towards the curb, we can stop alongside where the grass is. Yeah. So we're taking the power away from the wheels, getting the clutch down there, gently braking, to bring us to a complete stop. Okay, so we keep the power away from the wheels until we're in neutral and hand brake on. Job done. Nice work. Okay, um, cool, let's do it again. This time, we're going to turn right. It's opposite where we just turned left. Mm -hmm. Okay, turning right is pretty much identical to turning left with just maybe a couple of differences because, mm -hmm. say this is the side road that we're turning into and we're driving yeah. down the road, what we need to do is be mindful of any vehicles that might be coming the other way because mm -hmm. if they're going to get to the junction around about the same time as we are then we should slow down or even stop mm -hmm. let them go past and then turn in around the back of them yeah okay um, we also need to be mindful of when we're going to start to steer across okay because we want to yeah. make sure we're turning onto our side of the road not the wrong side of the road yeah, yeah. so i'll just give you a little bit of guidance on those two points so mm -hmm. Um, the likelihood of us needing to stop or slow down for somebody to go past is quite slim, but yeah, we never know. Yeah. Um, so if that is happening, then I'll just give you a little bit of guidance on what to do. But if we can steer across, again, just in second gear, uh, but nice and slow, and then I'll tell you when to start steering. But again, you're steering with your eyes. Yeah. Okay, you're just going to look at where you want the car to go before you start to steer in, and then you're just going to steer in that direction. Over to you when you're ready then. I'll leave the first bit up to you in terms of building up speed, going through the gears and then slowing down again for the roundabout. And I'll check behind, make sure it's safe before we move off. The 